Well, I think um, for the most part, it's a, it's a hope. It's a hope to be able to use art as a tool to generate change or function as a catalyst outside of itself, to really bring together communities and people regardless of faith and uh, background and cultural difference and try and connect them through ceremony and ritual to create more cohesive communities that really have more an invested tolerance and compassion towards each other. So for me it's very much about bringing the East and the West together. I guess my practice is a bridge. Um, as far as ethnicities go, as far as location goes, as far as spirituality goes. Uh, so it's a, it's a physical and metaphysical bridge and it's also a cultural East and Western bridge. Uh, for me to locate myself within that and to use my practice as a practice to be able to move forward with my own evolution as well as hopefully be able to use that as a tool to, to give others a space to be able to have voice within. It's been a continuous uh, learning process for me from being very young and having quite a different basis of philosophy and not being able to locate that anywhere physical. Uh, I was brought up in New Zealand but without any background or any cultural uh, information about my Indian Samoan or Maori heritage. So it's been in my adult um, I guess path or journey to, of self-discovery through going to those places but very much as an adult almost on the outside looking in to something that is inherently a part of me but has to be lived through to really understand. So I went to, I went to India without any knowledge of the culture or the language or really the history to a lot of levels and was there for three and a half years. Um, I went there, fell in love with it and tried to find a way to stay there. So by doing that, because there's so many people and it's so marginalised in so many ways, for me to prolong my time there I had to find a way of being useful there because I don't feel comfortable drawing from the resources when there's so many people there already when I come from a place of privilege to have access and take from that where there are so many people that need that more. So it was very much finding a way to locate myself in that space to be useful or have some sense of validity within that. So that was when I went down the volunteer path and uh, tried to find a way to inject my creativity within that environment so that it did actually generate change and I was there serving a purpose rather than just for my own benefit. So I worked with a company called uh, IndieCore, which is a, a volunteer organisation, NGO, who takes um, part Indian people from all around the world with, um, uh, they have to have a certain level of education, back into India and puts them into the field. So it's a two-way fold. So the Indian people of descent are learning about their culture whilst also taking an academic angle back into the field and the villages and applying it on a very ground, grassroots level. So I worked there with, um, on a couple of projects um, with Indian paints when they donated us paint and we went into the slum areas with the kids and painted the slums. So, and they weren't by no means, you know, these aesthetically <laughs> resolved, beautiful murals. It was really just about colour and vibrancy and giving these children a sense of worth um, to actually engage with something, which was really an empowering tool. So at that point, it was, a, it was a really large shift for me to be able to use my art as a tool or creativity as a tool for empowerment or for means of support or outreach or education for others. So that was a really instrumental shift in the way that I have applied it. So there's very much a consciousness around generating accessibility or allowing voice or creating a pathway for people to be involved or grow or learn with. So that's that for me is really instrumental. It's not enough for it to function as a commodity object. It has to have a serve a purpose outside of itself. So it's been a really interesting shift for me to then come back to the West and then try and locate that same mentality into working within the fine arts framework here. So it's, 
yeah, it's quite an interesting dynamic because whether it's located as art or uh, volunteer work or community service, it doesn't really bother me. I'm, I don't need to have a box within the framework of contemporary art, even though I do feel it is really aesthetically resolved and it does have the tangible and materiality aspects of fine art. But at some point during all of the work that I make, there's a handover between myself and the audience. When it stops, I stop having ownership over the work and I hand that over. And it's in that space of the handover and letting go and allowing whatever happens to come through that space is really what I find interesting in the work that I do make. That particular handover and let go and co-authorship between myself and the community at large.